TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn. We'll be bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as all the latest tools and gadgets. Watch our launch show on Monday the 2nd of November at 12pm on Freeview Channel 74, Sky Channel 670 or our YouTube channel when Helen from Woolly Chic will be teaching you how to crochet. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Yarn Lane TV and subscribe to our email newsletter to keep up to date with what's coming up. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw and as a professional sewer, I really know how important it is to use a high quality thread. Well, you think about it. You spend a lot of money on your sewing machine, you'll spend a lot of money on fabric and you'll spend a lot of time sewing. So why let your thread let you down? I know a lot of our designers and customers prefer to use Aurifil thread. Now this is a family business, it was established in 1983 and they're based just outside Milan in Italy. They produce superior quality threads for domestic and professional sewers alike and they've achieved worldwide success with quilters, sewers, embroiderers and textile artists who all appreciate the versatility and the strength of these threads. It's all made from Egyptian cotton, which is grown just at the side of the River Nile, and Aurifil only use the long staple threads, which gives their thread that strength. Each one of these threads goes through 15 steps before it even gets onto a spool and then comes to you to use in your sewing projects. Now at Sewing Street, we've collaborated with Aurifil and we've brought you two collections of threads. So we have the Quilters collection and these are exclusive to Sewing Street. We've done a lot of research with Quilters and these are the colours that you prefer to use. So we've put a whole collection together for you. The second collection is the Essential collection. So this is for the homemakers, for the bag makers, for the craft sewers, for the dressmakers. And again, these have been proven to be the most popular colours that you're going to use. So if you want your projects to last longer and your seams to be stronger, invest in some quality thread. Hi, I'm Helen from Woolly Chic. I design knitting and crochet patterns and I also teach crochet in Hitchin, Hertfordshire, where I live. My mum taught me to knit and crochet when I was a teenager, but it wasn't until my children were little that I picked up a crochet hook again and literally became hooked and I haven't stopped crocheting and now knitting uh, ever since. I began designing about eight years ago and started selling my patterns as part of kits, putting together my designs with British wool. Some of which comes from my family's sheep farmed in Pembrokeshire, Wales. I love the fact that with a simple fibre like wool, you can create something really beautiful and unique. Uh, like garments or handmade accessories, um, cushions, blankets, yeah, the possibilities are limitless. Um, I'm also passionate about teaching crochet and passing on the skills that I have learnt. I'm really looking forward to being part of Yarn Lane TV and sharing some tips and tricks with you and I really hope that you enjoy watching. Hello, I'm Kerry from Living in Loveliness and I'm delighted to be part of the Sewing Street team. I'm based in Wolverhampton and I absolutely love working with fabulous fabrics. In particular, I love working with fat quarters and showing you how to get the most from your scraps. I love bringing communities of sewists together and encouraging people to sew for greater causes. Most recently, we have been sewing for our NHS and key workers. Um, I look forward to bringing you hints, tips and techniques. I'll see you soon. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hi. 
Hi, I'm Helen from Woolly Chic. I design knitting and crochet patterns and I also teach crochet in Hitchin, Hertfordshire, where I live. My mum taught me to knit and crochet when I was a teenager, but it wasn't until my children were little that I picked up a crochet hook again and literally became hooked and I haven't stopped crocheting and now knitting uh, ever since. I began designing about eight years ago and started selling my patterns as part of kits, putting together my designs with British wool, some of which comes from my family's sheep farmed in Pembrokeshire, Wales. I love the fact that with a simple fibre like wool, you can create something really beautiful and unique, uh, like garments or handmade accessories, um, cushions, blankets. Yeah, the possibilities are limitless. Um, I'm also passionate about teaching crochet and passing on the skills that I have learnt. I'm really looking forward to being part of Yarn Lane TV and sharing some tips and tricks with you and I really hope that you enjoy watching. Well, it's 12 o'clock, it's 12 o'clock, it's Monday the 2nd of November, so it is Yarn Lane. I am so excited about this. I've been working, obviously I come and present for you on Sewing Street on a Monday, but in the background I've been really involved with Yarn Lane because I love knitting and crochet. I've worn my crochet cardigan in celebration that I made myself. It took hours, hours. But this is really the basics of crochet is a granny square. If you've never done crochet before, you are going to enjoy this. We've got Helen from Woolly Chic on today, who is a wonderful teacher, designer. She creates her own kits. So the whole point behind Yarn Lane is that we know a lot of you on Sewing Street love knitting and crochet and all other yarn crafts as well. So we wanted to bring you along the journey with us. We wanted to create things that you could buy and we want to teach you. When, when we first launched Sewing Street, the whole point of it was we wanted to provide products that you want to buy in an easy way to do it. But we want to teach you and inspire you and show you, and this is exactly the same with Yarn Lane. The wonderful thing is, because we're joined together and Sewing Street is our sister channel, is that when you buy anything from Yarn Lane on the Yarn Lane website, it will be one p and across the both boards. So if you bought something at 8 o'clock on Sewing Street and you buy something at 12.52 on Yarn Lane, it'll still be one p and so that's great. So obviously the majority of projects and crafts that are done with yarn and knitting and crochet, so we will be focusing on that. We're going to start right at the beginning, which is today, with the complete beginner. Um, we've got our own website, even more exciting. Different to Sewing Street, it's www.yarnlane.com. You can tell it's us because it's in really lovely autumnal colours and navy blue. It's really nice, I like it. Um, it ex works exactly the same way as Sewing Street. You click on watch live, it, watch live, it will show you what products are coming up. You can click on them, you buy them, it's done. If you have a look at the products, they're coming down the screen now. We've got the kits that Helen is selling today, plus a few select products. We haven't just put any, anything on. These products here are the ones that we have bought and selected specifically to go with what's on the show. Um, we've also got the how to keep in touch. We want to hear from you. What do you want to learn? I know what I want to learn. I know what I'm interested in. But what do you want to learn? We'd love it if you sent your messages in as told us what you're interested in. Um, you can email the studio, studio at yarnlane.com. So although we are a sister of Sewing Street, we're not the same person. We are on our own. So you message the studio separately. You can follow us on Facebook, Yarn Lane TV. Definitely follow us on Instagram at Yarn Lane TV. I want to see your photos. What have you done? What have you created? You can follow us and we'll follow you. We want to see what you want, but we also want to see what you've made because it's all about inspiration. So if you want to buy any of the kits that we're showing you today, any of the products, you need to go on yarnlane.com, but your P&P will be kept separate, will be kept together with Sewing Street, so you will only be paid the one, okay? So we have got this fantastic cake made by Alice and Marion. It's lovely. I'm going to cut it, but I'm not going to eat it. I'm going to eat it later, although I'm worried if I cut it and they'll take it off me and someone else. Should we have a look, look inside? I'm going to have to cut a slice. Should we have a little look? 
Oh, oh, how much do you want a piece of that? Oh, so send us a picture and I want to see what you make. I mean, I've... I would like to know what you want to do. I know what I want to do. I know what the rest of the team wants to do. What's, what sort of thing are you doing at the moment? What's your favourite thing? What's your best thing? Um, we're going to teach you. The reason I've spoken to lots and lots of different suppliers and manufacturers and kit manufacturers and all sorts, and we've asked Helen to come on today because we want to show you that we're going to teach you, and particularly with crochet, I know there are a lot of knitters out there who want to crochet, a lot of sewers who want to crochet. It's incredibly popular at the moment. Um, and Helen is going to show us how to do that today. If you want to phone the call centre, last thing before we get Helen on, if you want to, um, if you want, before I introduce the kids, if you want to call the call centre, it's the same numbers, 0800 4700 600. It's a complete, fr completely free, it's a UK call centre. Lovely, lovely people working there, very helpful. They'll be able to sort out what you can and you, you can't do. Anyway, I'm going to move the cake. Now, don't, don't, if I move this cake, don't anyone eat it. Okay? Yeah, so I'm, if anyone eats that cake before I come off. So, let me talk about the kits that Helen's going to show us today, and then we will get her on. So, there is, this is the first one, this is the most important, well, to me, this is the most important one. This is the Learn to Crochet Granny Squares kit. Such a lovely kit. Comes, Helen's business is called Woolly Chic, because it's woolly and it's chic. Um, and in the kit, you get the full instructions that are created by Helen and all these beautiful balls of yarn in here and a crochet hook. So really, there's everything you need. Oh, and a wool needle as well. Everything you need is in the kit. Now, this starts you right at the very beginning. If you've never crocheted before and you want to learn, the, cra the granny square really is the building block. In this is what you get to make. In the kit, there is enough materials to make nine of these squares. Nine. So you can join three by three. You can make them into a cushion. You can make them into a bag. You can make more and more and more of them and eventually make a whole cardigan. I've got about 80 in mine. Um, you just keep making them. But this is the building block of crochet. Once you've cracked all the techniques that are used in a granny square, you can move on. Now, if you want to buy these, what I would suggest is you, because Helen's going to be teaching you, you want to sit back, relax, watch, and see what she's going to show you. So pop it in your basket, check out, and then it's yours. Um, if you go to www.yarnlane.com, you can pop it in your basket. If, you, if you've done crochet before and you want to have a refresher or you want to, you know, you just, you just want to have a bit of a, a refresher, this is perfect because it shows you how to do it. It's all pure wool. It's really lovely. It feels really nice. It's good quality. You know, in the same way as Sewing Street, we bring you good quality products for you to buy. So I'll pop this one back in. So that's the Learn to Crochet kit. Now, honestly, these are going to be so popular. I would suggest you get them in your basket and check out. If you have a look on the website, then they are all there for you to check out. So let me pop that one away. The next kit I'm going to go with is ooh, the Mandela kit, because I really like this one. Really, really like this one. I've got bunting attached the mandala kit. So this is so lovely because it all comes packaged in a tote bag and the really clever thing is, is the tote bag has actually got the mandala pattern on it. Now if you've never tro tried co crochet before, you might look at that and go, what does that mean? What does that? But it's the diagram, it's the stitch diagram, all will make sense in just a few minutes time. This is how you do it. I mean, a lot of crochet patterns will come with a diagram and words, you, and you can use either. So once you've created, this is what you get to make. Let me show you the finished thing. So this is the mandala that you get to make with the kit. Isn't that beautiful? And then you can sew it to the tote bag. You can sew it to the back of it and keep the front. And you could embroider over that, it'd be really pretty. Or you could sew it to that side of it. But isn't that beautiful? So the kit comes with the tote bag, with the full instructions, everything you do. It's even got photographic walkthroughs, really easy. It's got the pattern. It's got, it, it's, everything is explained very simply and very easily how to do it. And then obviously you've got all the materials you need to make it. So let's take all of these out. I love the colours. Some of the colours might be slightly different in each one, just to say. 
So you get your four mil crochet hook, which you need and obviously is yours to keep for your next projects. And then you've got the four balls of yarn and you've got all the instructions here. But you then get a beautiful tote bag. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that lovely? I really like that. So that is your kit for the mandala. I'm going to put that all back. And then the last two kits, let me just put it all back. Because if I don't put it back, I will get all mixed up with it. Um, oh, bunting. So in this kit, I love this. In this kit, you get enough yarn and instructions and everything to make your bunting. And you can make, I think, big bunting. Does that say happy? Because I'm reading it from behind. I should lay it down. Happy. And then there's also enough yarn well, you can make whatever you, but you, there's enough yarn to make the little bunting. Isn't that lovely? But there's just something really tactile and appealing about a home, the homemade bunting, isn't it? This is the sort of crochet when you see it on Instagram and you see it on Pinterest, you think, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to be able to make. In the, in the kit, you obviously get a lovely little... Um, cotton bag you get the full instructions that tells you everything you need to know you get your crochet hook and all the rainbow yarn so now this is particularly important at the moment isn't it we need to be doing rainbows we need to be celebrating everyone's having rainbows to decorate their houses this is perfect isn't it so this is the great thing about crochet is everything you make in crochet is decorative or useful isn't it it just feels so nice and the great thing is is that when you've finished making this you've learned a whole new skill so the finally 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 the final kit is to make these little flowers the learn to crochet flowers so you can make a sunflower and a daisy and a poppy and a rose Aren't they lovely? Now you could use these for, so you could, they've got, um, these have got pins on, so you could use them as a brooch. You could sew them to the centre of things, use them to decorate things, wear them, put them on a hairpin, all sorts. But if you want to do just a little project, this is perfect. And what's great about this is that you don't have to buy all the big bar balls of yarn that you don't want to have. So this, Helen has pre-wound all of these into just the right quantities you need. So this is great. If you've never done crochet before, you don't already have a big yarn stash, this is perfect. So you just need to choose. Do I want to do granny squares? Do I want to do a mandala? Do I want rainbow bunting? Do I want flowers? Do I want all of them? Now, remember, you need if you want to buy one of the kits, you need to go on to um, www.yarnlane.com. If you go on there, or you can call the call centre. It's a free call number 0800 4700 600. You can buy all of the kits there. Right. Just say, remember I said at the beginning, it's really important that you put it in your basket and you check out. Half of the stock of the Granny Squares has already gone. And we haven't even had Helen on. Quarter of the stock of the mandala's gone. We haven't even had Helen on yet. And now if you want to enjoy this and you want to learn and you want to sit back and relax, you need to put it in your basket and check out. The numbers that we've got are the numbers that we have and we've already sold half of it. So, shall we? Let's get Helen on. I'm just going to move everything and we'll disinfect the desk. Um, so, meet the designer. We'll watch this, this video and then we'll get Helen on. Hi, I'm Helen from Woolly Chic. I design knitting and crochet patterns and I also teach crochet in Hitchin, Hertfordshire, where I live. My mum taught me to knit and crochet when I was a teenager, but it wasn't until my children were little that I picked up a crochet hook again and literally became hooked. And I haven't stopped crocheting and now knitting uh, ever since. I began designing about eight years ago and started selling my patterns as part of kits, putting together my designs with British wool, some of which comes from my family's sheep farmed in Pembrokeshire, Wales. 
I love the fact that with a simple fiber like wool, you can create something really beautiful and unique, uh, like garments or handmade accessories, um, cushions, blankets. Yeah, the possibilities are limitless. Um, I'm also passionate about teaching crochet and passing on the skills that I have learnt. I'm really looking forward to being part of Yarn Lane TV and sharing some tips and tricks with you and I really hope that you enjoy watching. Okay welcome back so we've um, I've moved desks, disinfected, I've got Helen in now. Um, we have got the wonderful Helen Ingram from Woolly Chic. So good morning Helen, thank you for coming to visit us all the way up here. Oh it's lovely to be or here. Or down, it's down for you, is yeah. it up? Have you come um, up? No up. Okay. I'm hitching so uh, yeah. So tell me why did you set up Woolly Chic? Wow, um, so about eight years ago I set up Woolly Chic and it was really as a response to not being able to find the wool to use with my crochet. I've been crocheting for a number of years and um, my family have a sheep farm in Pembrokeshire in Wales and so I looked at all the sheep in the in the fields and thought well why can't I get the British wool mm. that is in all the colours and um, the the kind of modern patterns and uh, and really it sort of went from there I then okay. got my own yarn um, spun mm. and dyed and um, and started designing specifically with British wool and so woolly sheep grew from okay. there but one, but one of my passions is actually teaching crochet because I, because I sort of learned from my mum and mm. then taught myself from books and, and then later YouTube has been fantastic and passing on those skills um, is, oh, I Well, love, I think we've I got so love. many people who want to learn here. We've just had one person who's message you. Kathy's bought a granny square crit. Mm. Oh, there's only one left in stock. Oh so they've goodness. been so popular. Wow. Because um, everyone wants to learn how to crochet. Well, and a granny square is a great place to start. It is a, it, it's, it's the best place it to is start. It's the best isn't it? place because it it is well, it is very straightforward. And everybody looks at it and thinks, oh my goodness, it's it's looks complicated, but it's actually not. It's it's really Okay, so where do we start? I'm gonna let you just okay. let you roll. Right. Well, what I thought I would do is just start from the absolute basics and okay. start with um, how to hold the hook, how to hold the yarn, um, and all Do you want to just move left a bit? Just because if you look in the there you can yep, see. So if I there kind we go. Of come here. That's where we're going to get Elliot to come in really close up because they need to see close. Right. So if you look on the. Yeah, like yeah. So see? if. Right. Okay, so. Left so a bit more. All, pro all the projects. There we are. Right. Squeeze I'll over. Leave you now. <laughs> <laughs> so all crochet um, starts with a slip knot. Um, and to make a slip knot, you make a loop of yarn and then take another loop through that loop and pull it up. Now, people make slip knots in all different ways. Um, there's no right or wrong way, but you know it's a slip knot when it can grow or decrease in size. So what you don't want is you don't want to make it into a knot. Um, and then the yarn. Now, if you are right-handed, you'll hold your hook in your right hand. And obviously, if you're left-handed, you'll hold it in your left hand. And then your yarn goes in the other hand. Now, for knitters who have perhaps never crocheted before, this is really difficult because obviously you've got one hook as opposed to two needles um, and quite often the yarn is on the other side. So when I'm teaching knitters, uh, I have to keep saying, no, yarn goes on the, on the left side if you're a right-handed person. And so all the hooks come in your kits, don't they? Yes, yeah. So all my, all my kits are um, aimed at complete beginners so they and they have progressions onto more harder mm. projects um, and they all all will come with the um, appropriate size hook perfect perfect but right so we've got the yarn on the so you've got your your hook in your right, right hand, hand if you're right-handed okay. your yarn in your left hand or on the left hand side you hold your hook now again People hold their hooks in all different ways, and there's no right or wrong way. But I hold it like a pen, 
or like a dart and I kind of have my top finger on top of the yarn just to keep it sort of um, steady and in place and then I wrap my yarn round my little finger of my left hand between my middle finger and my first finger and then grip with my thumb and first finger the bottom of the of the loop that is on your hook and that way you can then put your hook under the yarn and pull through and there you've made a chain stitch and that's the basic stitch for, for crochet so I show you that again so again I'm gripping the bottom of that loop putting the hook under now the hook goes from the front to the back this is like a dart catch the yarn and pull it through the loop under catch the yarn and pull it through so for a granny square you can start with four chain stitches and then we're going to make a middle so we're going to make a circle in the middle so let me just show you the the granny square so we start from the middle and we work in around now if you're right-handed you'll be working in an anti-clockwise direction if you're left-handed you'll be working in a clockwise direction it all makes sense it'll make sense when, <laughs> when i get going it's all making um, sense already i've got it i've got it so <laughs> so i've made my four chains now when, when i when i teach complete beginners i just get them to make a really long chain and just keep going keep getting hold of the yarn and just practicing that chain stitch and just doing a big long chain mm. and um, that gets the the feel of the yarn um, and get you know gets builds their confidence yeah but so if you've never done this before just keep chaining and chaining yeah and just chaining just start with the chain exactly okay and then you can pull it all out and start again <coughs> because you only need four four chains so but to make this into uh, the center circle of our granny square we're going to have to put our hook into the very first chain that we made so you put your hook into the chain under the yarn which is over my finger and pulling it through the stitch and through the loop that's on your hook and that's called a slip stitch. Now it might be worth just mentioning at this point that I, um, that I teach and write my patterns in UK crochet terms oh, and yeah. uh, it can be really confusing if you are learning mm. to crochet and you come across American patterns because American patterns use different abbreviations yeah. and different terminology so for example with a granny square we uh, I in my pattern I write a treble crochet stitch and I'm going to demonstrate how to do a treble crochet stitch but in America they call that a double crochet stitch which gets confusing because then a double crochet stitch in the Yeah, it's in a really UK complicated thing, isn't it? Is, yeah. And sometimes you don't know which is which. You so don't. you are UK terms, so just remember that. Yes, this yes. So kits are UK terms. UK terms. So if you're used to crocheting with uh, American terms, mm. you just need to do a bit of... Um, you, the conversion the charts are really easy they, to find. Yeah, so. you just Google them and yeah. they're, and they're there online. What does one mean? Okay. So back to the granny square. So ready to make the first round of, uh, of a granny square. Now I'm going to be referring to my, my chart here. Uh, in the kit there is also the um, written instructions. But on the chart, each of these symbols represents a stitch. So to start off with round one, I'll be doing three chains and two treble stitches. And that will be the first side of the granny square. So starting off then with one, two, three. And the next stitch is a treble crochet stitch. And a tre to, to do a treble crochet stitch, you take the yarn round the hook. Then we're going to put it into the center of the circle that you made with the original train stitches. Pull a loop through and you have three loops on your hook. Then we're going to go yarn around the hook and pull through two of those loops. And then yarn around the hook and finish off the stitch by pulling through the last two loops, leaving one loop on your hook. Now this is when you know that you've finished your stitch because you'll have one loop on your hook. 
if you end up with a row of loops all the way down your crochet hook, mm -hmm. you know that you've gone slightly <laughs> wrong. And, um, that and you're knitting. You, you're knitting <laughs> or you're doing Tunisian crochet, which is a whole other technique. That's for another and, day. Uh, another, another day. day. <laughs> another day. I'll come back and teach Tunisian <laughs> yeah, crochet. Definitely. But uh, but you always want one loop on your on your hook. So then, um, because we need to do sets of three, we're going to do another treble crochet stitch. So a yarn around the hook and into the middle. Catch the yarn from behind. You've got three loops on your hook. Yarn around the hook, pull through two, and yarn around the hook and pull through two. And there we've got the, the first side of your four sides of your granny square. So coming into the corner, you do two chains. One, two. Now all of our stitches are working into the middle of the ring. They're all working into the, the center of your, of your granny square for round one. So it's really easy. You don't have to find any sort of fiddly little stitches. So now we're going to do another three treble crochet stitches into the middle. So one, two, three. I might have done that a bit too quick. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, And then I'm back in the corner, so I'm going to do two But once you've done a few chains. of these, you will be this quick. <laughs> it is practice, and I've had many years of practice. Mm. So moving on to the next side. Pulling through for two, pulling through two for one treble. Two, three. And pull through two, two. and then pull through two. two. I become a bit like a broken record when I'm teaching, where I go, right, treble crochet, yarn around the hook, hook. into the middle, catch the yarn. It's very rhythmic though, isn't it? It it's is. It's very relaxing. It is very relaxing. It's almost meditative. Mm. So again, we're at a corner, so we do two chains in the corner, and then yarn around the hook, into the middle, pull through two loops, pull through two loops, yarn around the hook, into the middle, pull through two, and pull through two. I always think that it makes sense that it's called a treble crochet stitch because there's three stages yes, to it. Exactly. The first stage is yarn around the hook and into the middle and mm -hmm. catch the yarn. That's stage one. Then the next one is yarn around the hook and pull through two. That's stage two. And then yarn around the hook and pull through two. And that's your third stage. So treble crochet, yes. three steps. That's a really good way to remember it, isn't it? Yes. That you've three steps is a yeah. treble. So the final corner two chains. Now we need to join it up to our original three chains that we made and we're going to put the hook into and the, the, each of the stitches is like a V, is like a V shape. So you want to count the V's, one, two, three, and you put your hook into the third to make another slip stitch. So again, yarn around the hook and then you slide through the stitch and through the loop that's on the hook. Brilliant. And then, and then we've got the middle. So I'll just show you briefly how to um, break the yarn and, uh, and cast off because we're going to change colour to move on for a different colour um, onto the next round. So then yarn around the hook and you, as if you were making a chain, but this time you're going to pull up a big loop. Now I'm just trying to look and see if I can locate my scissors. There's some scissors there in the. Um oh, great. Although they're quite big. I did have, oh. my, <laughs> I did have my embroidery scissors. Uh, here we go. So yeah, these are must-have tools, a pair of embroidery scissors just for, we have for cutting got, um, the yarn. Well, we have got the Fiskars embroidery scissors that are on the website. If, you're, if you want to buy, these are perfect because they're small and sharp. Brilliant. And just what you need, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, so really brilliant. if you brilliant. want to buy exactly the right scissors you need for crochet, these are those. I've chosen them especially for this because they, are, they just need to be small and sharp. Yeah, yeah, great. <laughs> So for the next, so for my next tip is to um, to show you how to join uh, a new colour. So in the Granny Squares kit, you've got. Um, Unfortunately, that's now sold oh, out. Oh, it's all Granny sold Squares out. Kit. Well, we'll we're still learning. Let's so yeah, carry we'll, on. We'll do that um, for another few minutes. Can make then we'll some move more on. more available. Yeah, but we'll um, yeah. uh, but all of my kits um, include 100% British wool, um, and some of the kits include this self striping. Uh, colour changing wool, which is That's which lovely. is fantastic. That's really nice. So I'll just show you at this point. Then I'll just show you how to um, join another colour um, for your second round. So you put your hook into any of the corner chain spaces. 
between your sets of uh, three trebles. So you put your hook in and then you pull all the way through your loop, but you hold on to the tail and the working yarn. And this time you put your hook underneath both strands and you pull both strands through. Now that looks a bit odd because you've got now two, two loops mm -hmm. on your hook, but you ignore that because that's not a stitch, it's just a join. And at that point you can then give the tail a tug and move it out of the way and uh, carry on crocheting with your pattern. And then again, starting as you did for round one with three chains, one, two, three. And the reason why you start with three chains is um, because you've got um, this the same height as a treble crochet stitch. And then, and then we go off again. So the great thing about granny squares is you can kind of make them any size and you don't really need to follow a pattern too carefully because it has the same pattern repeat and yeah. grows because yeah. in the corner, that's where you make your increases. So I've got two chains and then back into the same corner space. And all for, of this information is in the pattern. It's all in there. And also I include links to uh, my uh, YouTube videos, which I believe is also on the Yarn Lane. Yeah, YouTube so it'll be channel. on YouTube um, tomorrow. So you can watch this back. So I know you at the moment, you know, Helen's going through this quickly, but you can watch the first bit quite slowly. But they've also... I and we are going to try and get some more kits from yeah. Helen. Yes, and, and also on Yarn Lane TV YouTube, there's also um, my techniques, um, basics videos yes, on there yeah. as well. So you can watch so, those as yeah, well. The, you can play them over and over and over <laughs> yeah. again. Just keep playing them. I always find them, I love my iPad and I just keep rewinding and starting yeah. and rewinding. So just watch them again. But we will try and get hold of some more kits from Helen for you. Oh. So, um, so in the corner, so I've done uh, three, three, set, um, three trebles, two chains, three trebles, and then moving on to the next corner, I need to move along the side with a one chain. So one chain, and then back into the next corner space. Now the nice thing about um, changing colour is you can easily see I where love the this space yarn. is. It's gorgeous. Yeah, it's really, it's really lovely. It's uh, West Yorkshire Spinners Colour Lab. And it's, uh, yeah, it's just beautiful. And the nice thing about crochet is if you do make a mistake, you just can pull out just a couple of stitches and, you know, reposition your, your hook and your yarn. And yeah, it, it, it's much more forgiving, I think, um, than, than knitting, certainly. But uh, no, it's, it's great. And it's so portable as well. It's, you yeah, know, you, you, you only need you, a little thing. You just thing. need your, your uh, hook and your mm. yarn and away you go. I mean, I think that's, that's why it appealed so much to me when I was um, first crocheting and my kids were little. Yeah. And I'd be sort of hanging about, waiting for them, picking them up from cubs mm. or picking them up from swimming lessons. And I'd have a yarn, a ball of wool, crochet hook, and I'd just be and making, that's all you need, that's all it? you need. It's so portable. And also, if you want, you know, you can just do a square and you just make piles of squares and then you create them into something yes, else. Yes, yes. I mean, of course, you can make big blankets in stripes yes. and, uh, um, and they're nice for crocheting in front of the television. Well, yeah. <laughs> keeping your legs warm. And it gets warmer as it gets bigger and yes, bigger. Yes, yeah, it does. Oh, that's lovely. So it, with the mandala kit then, is this, yep. is this similar? Well, this is the great thing about mandalas is that I love the bag. If you can, yes, and if you can do a um, if you can do a granny square, then you can do a mandala. In fact, it's even easier than um, it's even easier than doing a granny square because there are no corners. So, so do you do the circle. So you start off in the middle, and if I just grab, I love the um, I, just I do love the yarn because it does look. It looks so woolly, woolly, but well, it, it does look thick and luxurious. Well, this it? the the, uh, the the wool that is included in the mandala kit is actually from my uh, cousin's sheep. Oh, is it? So yeah, oh. so so this so most of the wool um, is from so that the purple and the raspberry mm. is from my cousin's sheep, and they have uh, a farm in Narbuth in Pembrokeshire. 
and wow. it's just such a beautiful place and the sheep are really well looked after and mm. to be able to then say well look I know where the wool comes okay. from yeah. and they come from happy sheep and so they come from uh, happy sheep and what a lovely gift for someone you know is not crocheted yes, yeah. because it comes with the bag and the hook it's everything it does and it's just so um, and, the, and the nice thing is that with this pattern is that you can actually um, you can make it bigger and bigger and bigger so there is enough wool to make many different um, uh, mandalas mm. there's there's a couple of well, patterns. tell me about the ones on the wall so yeah so so <laughs> the so so this one you can't make them with the kit just saying n but you but the pattern for the rainbow mandala is the same as oh, the pattern right. there so if can't you can't make it with the kit but but if you had rainbow wool then you would just use the pattern and just keep repeating it so that bigger. it goes out and out so it's I made beautiful. so I made this um, I made this mandala for a yarn bombing display in mm -hmm. Hitchin um, to thank the NHS and to right. uh, and so we had rainbows all the way uh, covering these beautiful trees in the middle of um, yeah, so that's lovely, isn't so, it? Yeah, so yes, so and I guess the one on the right is the centre of the mandala. That's as well. it. Yeah, it's and they're joined well. onto hula hoops. So Fantastic. in order to join them onto a hula hoop, you're just doing chain stitches and slip stitches. So where I showed you before on a granny square, yeah, you, you've got the um, you you loop the chains over and then you make a slip stitch and then you make it. So it's a bit awkward, but mm. it's yeah, uh, it's it's, a, it's, it's beautiful. effective. So once you so once you've learned this, you can carry on. So yes. where do you, so in the, you start at the middle. So you start in the middle exactly the same as a granny square, right. except for you don't do the chains in the corner. You are just literally doing your treble crochet stitches in the circle, chains and trebles. So it's exactly the same stitches as a granny square. As in a mandala. So this is easier then. It's easy. It's easier. It just right. and um, for people who um, like charts. You've obviously got the chart on the bag, you've video. got the chart in the pattern, and you've got the written instructions. Mm. So it is, uh, and there's a, couple of, um, there's a couple of patterns for different mandalas. So for example, this mandala here uh, is also in, included, the pattern oh, for okay. this is so also included. Choose. So you could use that as um, coasters, you could make them bigger and make them as table mats. Um, and because the wool is is kind of robust, it's really and thick, uh, yeah, it? it's it's good. Um, it's good for those sorts of homeware projects. You probably mm. wouldn't want to wear it close to your skin, but for a mandala, yeah. it, it's ideal. Yes, so, yeah. um, but it looks quality, doesn't it? And yes. I think when yeah. you've spent that time on something, that's right. It's worth it. Being yes. Quality. Yeah, definitely. Well, it's the most popular of the kits today. Well, the mandala yes, one. Oh my goodness. It's sold out. Wow, <laughs> that's We're incredible. just keep moving on. No, <laughs> okay, <laughs> right. So, um, but it, no, but we are here to teach them and show them as we you know that it's something it. that we do on Sewing Street. Even when we sell out, we still we still teach them. So yeah. Well, so then, but basically, not, they they just repeat the trebles. Yes. Yeah. So but just so keep going. with this one, it is just trebles, and uh, in the pattern, it shows you how to do. Uh, an alternative to those three chains that I was talking about, and it's called a standing treble. And right. I could demonstrate that now. Yes, do. Um, do. And yeah, so let me just grab some different wool. Do, do all of the kits come with the same yarn? Or is it random? It's quite random. Oh, nice. So for surprise. So, so it is a surprise. <laughs> it is. I've like tried to put all the um, all the colours together so they go well. Yeah, nicely they together. go. But it's and, a surprise. And uh, yeah, so I just need to have a look at this pattern because it starts with I think six chains. So again, I'll just do one, two, three, four, five, six. So remember, if you want to buy any of Helen's kits today, you need to go on to www.yarnlane.com. And then if you look there, you will see all the kits listed below. Okay. Or you can call the call centre. You don't have to. If you don't want to um, go online, you can just call the call centre 0800 4700 600. It's up to you. OK. So for the first thing, I just need to make. So just as the same as I was doing treble crochet stitches into the ring there I will do exactly the same here except for as you're making a circle you are doing obviously more trebles and no chains for the corners move the tail out of the way the pesky tail 
The thing, ab the thing about yeah, so show us show us the stitch a bit slower so we oh, can sorry. watch so it. Oh, sorry. So I'm just trying because I'm chatting to I, you, and I am speeding <laughs> up just so I can get to the interesting yeah. bit. So, um, so I can make the circle. If it's all interesting. Oh, it's okay. So, <laughs> but it's the same. It's so it's a it's the treble. same treble stitch it's that Helen showed treble. us at the beginning. Yeah. So when you watch it back on YouTube, you can just watch the beginning where she goes at really. Really slow. I'm it is slowing brilliant down now. on YouTube, isn't it? It is. A uh, YouTube is fantastic. Or, although you just have to get the right YouTube video because there's some YouTube videos out there that are mm. a bit confusing. So, especially if you are if you're learning UK terms and you come across an American. Yes, exactly. Um, but if you watch Helen's videos, they are all U UK terms. Yes. Yeah. When you are a few weeks into crochet you'll understand all of this and you'll be like what it's so confusing right so you've done all of your so I've done the middle here so I'm just going to now look and see so I've got um I'm going to count now the the way to count the stitches is that you either look at the edge of the stitches and you can see these series of v's so you yeah. can count the v's or if they're trebles they're quite easy because they're these posts here so I'm gonna just going to count and see how many I've got. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I've got too many, but that doesn't matter because then the nice thing about it is I've got 13, so I can count back 1, 2, 3, and just put my hook into that last stitch and pull out the stitches. Now I'm going to do a slip stitch and join. Oh, that's what you showed us earlier. Yeah. So by putting my hook straight into that last, to that first of those three chains that I made, I'm pulling all the way through and all the way through the loop that's on my hook. So that's made a nice center for my mandala. And then I'm going to break the yarn here and cut the top of the loop and then pull out and then pull this end and it makes a nice neat not. Now for the next one, for the next round, there are no chain spaces like in the um, mm. like in the, the granny squares. So this time I'll be going into the stitches and I'll be coming under with my hook under the two parts of the V. Sometimes you get patterns that say front loop or back loop and so then you only have to pick out one part of that of that stitch but for for most patterns with crochet, you have to put your hook under both parts of the stitch, so both bits of the V. So, but to do a standing stitch, this is an alternative way of uh, of joining a new colour. Right, we've got how long? Have we got ten minutes. Okay, we have ten minutes left. Right, so I'll just we'll show, show you that, this, and then we'll talk and about we'll the yeah, yeah that's great. Fine. <laughs> so, um, just let you know as we go along. So, to make a standing treble stitch. This time you're going to do, make exactly the same as you started off with a slip stitch and you put that onto your hook. And at this point you go yarn around the hook as if you were making a treble and then you go into the stitch. Now you can join at any point and then yarn around the hook. Have I done this right? Yarn, yarn around the hook, because it is fiddly, yarn around the hook, into the stitch, catch the yarn from behind and pull through, and there you've got your three loops on your hook, yarn around the hook, and you're going to pull through two. Now I'm holding on to the tail with my, with my thumb and my finger just to keep that secure. Then we've got two uh, loops on our hook, and we'll go yarn around the hook, and we'll pull through the two loops. And there you've got your treble, your standing treble. Perfect. So you can carry on yes, trebling yeah. round. Yeah. And when you're increasing, you need to pay attention to how many stitches you'll be putting into each stitch. So for the next round, you would be doing two treble crochet stitches in each stitch. Because so you need be, more. So yeah. So to keep, keep it flat. Round. Otherwise, you end up with a hat rather <laughs> than a rather Which than a coaster. Which would be handy. It would be, but uh, won't go on well, your back. Yeah, so, um, so you just follow the uh, instructions but in the, the pattern. But the pattern says all of that. To so say, yeah, to good. say how many stitches, and increasing is just putting two stitches into one stitch, and then you will increase. Lovely. Okay, okay so let's talk about the rainbow bunting. Yeah. 
Okay. What show is, yes, tell us what you get in it and what can you make? Yeah, so with the rainbow bunting. It comes in a little bag. It comes in, yeah, so it comes into this, um, so yeah, you've got the cotton bag and then you've got the rainbow colours of yarn. Obviously, so there is stock yeah. of this left. 25.99, yay, there is 25.99. All uh, British pure wool. Yep, yeah, and you've got, and then you've got the uh, the crochet hook. Now, we, this is all. This is ideal for beginners who want to make uh, very simple, um, simple bunting, mm. uh, like our the the little the little bunting flag. So That's if you've so never sweet. Yeah. So if you've never crocheted before, this is um, this is a really easy mm. project. Um, and uh, but for someone who can already crochet, who wants to maybe sort of extend their crochet yeah, skills yeah. and um, sort of, you know, practice a new mm. technique. I also um, show in this um, in this kit how to do the tapestry crochet and to do tapestry oh, crochet. Oh, show us what that looks like. Well, tapestry crochet is where you have got the um, two colours. So you've got two colours and you are crocheting with both colours at the same time and you're picking up the stitches so that you can follow the, the chart. Mm. Um, That's really nice because you can make this bunting and bring it out every year, couldn't yeah. it? Everyone's and, birthday. Uh, or you can, you know, so I've, done, I've just done happy here. So How many you flags can, can you make from one kit? You, you can actually make enough to spell out happy birthday. So there really? is, so yes, this, this yarn goes a really long way. So you've got uh, enough in the kit to do, I think it's 18, 18 wow. flags. Um, and it, it really is maybe for the next level of- If you're doing um, the tapestry yes, crochet. Yes, if you're doing the tapestry mm. crochet. And the other thing is I do have a, um, a teachable uh, video tutorial which mm. comes free with the kit That's so brilliant, you can sign up and, and in that uh, video tutorial I actually go through each of the steps of how to do tapestry crochet. So if even if you're a complete beginner when you get the kit through in yes. the instructions there's the link for the free vid tutorial yep. and you can learn that as well learn or you with start you. with the mini bunting you yes. can choose. And that's also on the video tutorial. So that's such a uh, good benefit isn't it? So you get yes. everything you need, all the instructions and the link to yep. the tutorial. Yep. And I think the the feeling behind it was because I can't at the moment go out there no. and teach people, I can't get it and sort mm. of hold their hands and position them into the right place. This was the next best thing to create <laughs> video tutorials and kits so mm. that they have everything that they need. So, so yes, it, it is sort of um, it's nice because it starts off right from the very basics. It's perfect. And it also uses a different stitch. So before in the granny squares and the um, mandala kit, I was using a treble crochet stitch. Mm. With the bunting, is a double crochet stitch. So that's okay. another stitch. So. Um, so you're getting like you in their living room. That yeah. With on, their, them. on their computer screen. On their computer with yeah. them. Well, when I did teach, uh, people would always say, oh, I really wish you could come home with me. Yes, just absolutely. Just sit next to me here yeah. and, uh, and tell mm. me, you know, do that yarn around the hook through two, through two. Mm. Just as a reminder, well, YouTube does that, doesn't it? It means that you can actually mm. press play, pause, and uh, and, Brilliant. You know, and a bit of a memory job. I think as well. that's lovely. I think because even if you're a beginner and you think, well, I want to have a go at the tapestry crochet, you have got the video that can give you a go. So yes, yeah, and it's not as complicated as it looks. It really is. I think and it's just beautiful, especially that you can make the whole of Happy Birthday with it. Yeah, or someone's name, or yes, yeah, ha or, or Happy Anniversary, mm. or I did it saying thank you on it. You know, for the yes. yarn bombing, and uh, yeah, no, it's it. Yeah, you can just write a message on it and hang it in your window. And I you? think that's what I love so much about crochet is it looks really complicated. It, it does, looks doesn't really it? difficult. Yeah, wow factor. But top. actually, it's only really three stitches, mm. and just put in a different combination. In, yes. Yeah, so yeah. It, it does actually. Uh, if you can manage to uh, master the basic three stitches. <laughs> Well, and then, the world, the world yeah. is your oyster. And everybody's really impressed. Yes, and it's so yeah. lovely. I think it's hard to explain how lovely it is to do until you do it. It is. So the yeah. final kit. The final, the final kit. Final, the final kit. kit, which has got lots of very little bits of wool to... But let's just right, clear those. You're like me. My, oh, my desk always ends up in a complete this is, mess. This is like my desk at home. It's just... Uh, um, 
So with the Learn to Crochet Flowers kit, that's where you can make, um, so you can make a, a little rose, uh, a poppy like the one I'm wearing, um, a, a daisy. I think you've and got. I think, are they here? Yes, I think they're underneath ah, everything. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> I left them with you. Yeah. So in this, so in this kit, I've got the uh, a pattern for the sunflower, a pattern for an easy rose, a very very simple um, daisy, which is treble trebles in the middle, like I've just shown you for the mandala, and then chain stitches and um, slip stitches. So what would you do with these? So what I would do is you could make them into brooches, mm. you could embellish uh, a bag or, or uh, you know, make a garland. I made a really lovely sort of uh, flower wreath in springtime with all these flowers, um, which, you know, looks so could fantastic. So could a beginner do these? Yes, definitely. And in fact, I've got, Ooh. I've been making the rose. Oh, nice. Very while I was in the green room earlier, okay. I started to make, um, start, well, I did a few granny squares while I was sat there and, um, and I'll just show you. So the, the, the rose is actually just, it's done in rows rather than rounds and it's just f four rows and then it spirals up. And you make oh, wow. and, so you you and you make it into oh, that's lovely. sort of petals. So you just you just keep you crocheting and then yeah. you roll it up. Yeah. So um, so and, and again with the learn to crochet flowers um, kit, you, there's also a link a free um, access to the teachable video tutorial. Okay. So that has oh, right. that has Marvelous. video support as well. So so in order to make these petals, I've done mm. so I've done a row. Um, of chain stitches, a row of double crochet stitches, and then the next row is treble, chain, treble, and a chain. Which you showed us last time, so yep, it is exactly just the same as the as the granny square. Miss a stitch and then treble, chain, treble, and that makes what's called a V stitch. Right. And then into the triangle spaces, so in the middle of your treble, chain, treble, you then would do six treble crochet stitches and that makes the petal so this is three so much counting there's so much counting with um with crochet yeah okay but you can have little counters you can counters. yes we have yeah. got a counter that you we'll do those at the end though we'll do them at the end so i've made my made my petal shape Okay, so you just did trebles in yeah. that space. And then into the square space, mm. which is the chain space next to your V-stitch, you're then going to do a double crochet stitch. Now, I haven't shown you that stitch today, but it is simply, instead of going yarn around the hook like you did for your treble crochet stitch, you put your hook straight in, then you go yarn around the hook and pull it through. You've got two loops on your hook. Don't let go of your hook though. <laughs> two mm. loops on your hook and then yarn around the hook and you pull through those two loops. And that's a double crochet stitch. And that then finishes off. And that gives that yeah, nice That finishes petal. off that petal shape. And then you just carry on all the way to the end. And then when you've got to all the way to the end, you do a slip stitch and then you just spiral it up and you end up with the, uh, with the row shape that's so and then with a, with a wool needle that's another essential tool is that you need a, a wool needle with a big eye and uh, and then to sew in the ends because because especially with granny squares there's an awful there's lot lots. of ends to sew in you keep changing color yeah. every round as mm. at the ends but so yeah get, um, get yourself a nice uh, wool needle um, and uh, and then just sew it over and over at the at the bottom, mm. and yeah. So that's that is a definitely a beginner crochet project. The, yeah. The so if you're new, don't be scared. This is really good. Scared. So yeah. whichever of these kits you would like, yeah, they're perfectly good. I mean, we sense. have selected Helen and I have spent a lot of time chatting about this. Yeah. Just today, we've yes. spent the last few weeks chatting yeah. about this, and we have chosen these specially because they're for beginners. Yeah. Yeah, and because no, they ideal. come with the tutorials, not just the granny squares that sold out or the mandala, um, 
but you can make so show us all the three flowers to get oh yeah there they are so on. so yeah so we've got and uh, the poppy which i'm which i'm wearing oh so you're wearing, got, oh, so I've the got, poppy comes in the so kit the, too yeah so there is so there's the pattern for the poppy um the sunflower the daisy and the rose so you've got uh, and also a tiny flower so you've got you've got five patterns you can really decorate different. something so that's why you? if you made a lovely floral wreath it would be yes. it would be lovely if you put these all together um yeah, yeah. I, I mean you amazing. could just buy one of those twig wreaths and just sew them in yeah. a cluster at the bottom yes you? Or glue definitely them on even yeah that's what yeah, yeah I got some twigs from my garden and just bent them round and mm. uh, yeah so so you can just see or sewing oh, look, this is Helen's poppy it's <laughs> lovely so it's very kind of apt at this time mm, of year it is yes yeah so, so yeah, so and all the materials are there are um, either British wool or the sunflower has actually got um, fair trade organic cotton um, for the sunflower and the and the daisy. So it's a really lovely yarn that supports farmers in Tanzania and India. So you've got that um, ethical. Uh, element to, so uh, to the kit. Well, thanks, Helen. It's been great. We've had so many messages in from you. We've sold out <laughs> of two of the kits. Um, a lot of people are saying that you're a natural teacher. They've oh. loved watching you. Thank you very much. It's been really, really, oh, really exciting. To and congratulations here. on finishing your and surviving your first ever show. It's been great. So <laughs> you are, it was a message on the bottom. Congratulations on the launch of your lane, Yarn Lane. I'm crocheting a shopping bag right now, feeling inspired. I hope to learn so Aww. much more. You will, Alison. You will. Yeah, you're fantastic. You will. <laughs> so, Helen, you're back with us soon. Next week. Actually, yes, all going well. No, nope, <laughs> she's back with us next week. And the scarf you're wearing, yes, that's is, one of the designs. It's going to be that one of the feature. kits. Yes, and that's the yes. um, the heart spun yarn. Yeah, heart spun yarn, which is my new yarn, uh, and this is the harmony of leaves scarf pattern. Mm. Which uh, that and some others. That's not the only one that Helen's yeah. bringing us so next Christmas week. Themed. It is the Christmas themed, but we haven't gone really super super Christmas. You know, it's Christmas. Yeah. themed yes so where <laughs> so helen will be taking you further and obviously she has all the tutorials as well so thanks so much helen that's really kind you're welcome <laughs> we do have a few other tools that helen's talked to because helen and i together selected these as well i didn't just make it up so um the wool needles i really like these i'm going to take them out of the packet so you can see them because you need a large eyed wool needle to um to sew up all of to sew all your ends in. It's one not ma man, many tools that you need for for crochet, but this is one of the really useful ones. So there's three different sizes, but these are great because they have a loop on the top, so they will allow multiple thicknesses of yarn inside. Oh, I was leaning over. Um, you get three different sizes in here: the small, the medium, and the large. But because they have this um, loop on the end, can you see? you can get the yarn inside them. So they are really, really useful. We, you know, we, on Wednesday, Yarn Lane, we are gonna have a tools show. Talk about that in a minute. So just run, um, um, the knitting counter, this is really important, because obviously you need to, this is useful for knitting and crochet, because you need to count, sometimes you'll need to count rows, you need to count stitches, all different things. If someone's talking to you, which is really annoying. Don't ever let anyone talk to you when you're crocheting. It's time to go away. But you need to count. So that's a really, really useful gadget. Um, this is one of the, cro the crochet hooks that are in most of Helen's kits are a four mi millimetre hook because that works with dub double knitting yarn. And Helen and I spoke to this and sometimes, you know, she, she provides the basic hook that you need. But this one is a soft grip hook. It's if you're going to be doing a lot of crochet, it is, it's a soft, it feels nice. So it's, this is my favourite crochet hook, actually. These are the ones I always use, just because I use lots of different ones. Um, and also, what you will need is the locking the stitch marker set, because you will need, um, when you're doing crochet, you will need to show, mark where your stitches are, sometimes where you've got to mark different rounds. And this brilliant little set here, and they're really pretty, it's got all these little stitch markers, but they lock. So in your knit, for both knitting and crochet, you will find these extremely useful and they come in a little packet as well. So that's really good. So when you want to shop on Yarn Lane, remember you need to visit www.yarnlane.com. That's where you visit, that's where you watch us, that's where you can shop. Remember there's only one PMP which is joined together with Sewing Street. So if you buy something at 8 a.m. on Sewing Street, something at 12.30 on Yarn Lane, still only one PMP. Um, 
the next yarn lane show will be on 12 o'clock on wednesday when we're going to be doing tools and gadgets i have had believe me hours of fun choosing different knitting and yarn and crochet tools and gadgets that you will love well they're the ones that i love and the things that i want and things that are really useful and when i speak to all the different guests that we've got planned for you i ask all of them what do you use and what should what should i use and so everything that they've recommended i've added together in a big list so um wednesday at 12 o'clock i'll be back with you to talk about tools and gadgets and then we will also be back on Friday at 12 o'clock with another crochet skirt show with another new guest. So thank you so much. Please send us messages with your photos. Um, put them on Instagram, put them on our socials. We'd love to see what you've made. Bye-bye, and it's really nice to see you.